Good evening, world. Tonight, I have a really excellent episode for you. This is part two of a story. Part one was last week. You can totally listen to this one without it, but you might get a little bit lost if you do. Just go do it. It's short and sweet. You'll love it. I promise you. But if you're already up to speed here, then I'll just remind you that this story is a little bit different for YouTube watchers. This episode is designed for a full mental immersion to shut off your lights and submit to the sleep tape. But if anyone watching at home prefers to look at something, we worked up some neat psychedelic visuals for you to get lost in. <laughs> psychedelic visuals? All right. This is part two of our sleep story, The Persuasion of Darkness. Begin by squeezing your toes a little harder, breathe in, and when you breathe out, release your toes with a big stretch. Now flex your ankles, breathe in, we're waking up the body, and a big ankle stretch to release. Now tighten your calves, and release your thighs, and while you're tightening your thighs, your fists as well. Release. Good. Feel all that stiffness flying away. Let's tighten and waken up your abs and forearms. Release. Flex your chest and upper arms. Almost there. And release. And now your shoulders and neck. And release. And now your face, squish it all up and release. You're now fully released. And the next thing we're going to do is sit up. I thought this was a sleep on tape. It is. Not a walk on tape. Sit up. Ugh. It's time to go. Where? The meadow. A real meadow? Well, you were having trouble with your imagination, so I'm taking things into my own hands here. That's it. Swing your legs and touch them down to the floor. I don't feel anything. And the first part had so many details. The cool, soft, and familiar hardwood floor of your cabin. Oh, there it is. Hello, floor. Wiggle your toes. Feel the sturdy floor below them and trust. Trust that the floor will hold you. Trust that your body will hold you up and stand. Whoops. Careful with the bedside table there. Now, stand up strong on your two feet that honestly seem plenty wide to keep you balanced. They're 4E. And take a step towards the door. That's double wide. Hard to find shoes. Reach for the doorknob. Don't make fun of me. And open it. I've had a hard life, shoe-wise. You don't need shoes where we're going. Oh, I have shoes. This is going to take all night if you don't start to focus. You brought it up. We're walking now. Starting to get used to the feeling. Walking through the bedroom door and down the short hallway of the cabin. The hall where all the nooks and crannies have been filled with trinkets and memories. Take a brief moment here to feel the calm, to really live in the memories before we go on our journey. Where? The meadow, Dave. Again with the meadow. We have to get to the meadow and I will protect you, remember? But you have to do exactly as I say, no straying. We have to get to the meadow. Take a look at your things here in the hallway. What do they mean to you? My grandmother had me design this little quilt. I used to draw all the time in high school. I was really into Japanese artwork for whatever reason. And this little knife is from when I went to Egypt. I still can't believe I was there. And this box still has love letters in it from middle school. <laughs> or was this where I hid my cigarettes in high school? I think it might be both. Wow. Man, I never look at this stuff anymore. Take a deep breath in. The deepest breath you've taken today. Breathe in the memories and the feelings and the smells of home. After this, we'll be on our way. Breathe in, 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 
and hold it. Think about all the times past, all the stuff you kept, and people who came in and out of this cabin. And with a huge exhale, finally release. Good. Take stock of how you feel. Wow. That was incredible. Feel the smile growing from the edge of your lips. Feel how it softens your eyes and perks up your ears. Feel how even your shoulders and back muscles, your knees and feet all soften and change. Feel the happiness wash over you like a wave of love. Feel the fullness of your life, the richness of your relationships, and the vividness of your experiences fully engulf you as the wave washes through you. And now the wave has passed and settled, reaching through your body, stretching far and wide. And now the gentle undertow starts to pull you towards the front door and inevitably towards the meadow. Feel it pull you. There's purpose behind it. As you near the door, one foot in front of the other on that familiar linoleum of the kitchen, you reach out with your right hand and grab the cold brass doorknob. Twist, pull the door open and step through into the night. We're moving now. You know your way. You've been there a thousand times. The meadow. That's right. We have to go. We must make it. You walk carefully in the gravel path. Shit, my shoes. You don't need them. Well, I made such a big deal about them. You pause, standing for a moment on the gravel. The soft, worn, sand-like gravel that has been there since the cabin was built in the 1970s, rubbing together and softening endlessly over time. The feeling is familiar, and yet tonight somehow gentler than ever, almost as if everything your feet touch is softer, easier to navigate. Wow. You realize suddenly that shoes are a waste, an impediment. If you are really going to feel your way to the meadow, you need all of your senses sharp. You take a deep breath in and release the idea of shoes from your mind. Let's do this. With your newfound sense of drive, you follow the old gravel path down the sloping dirt that leads to the dock. You take a small jog from the declining hill onto the old softened wood of the dock where there are absolutely no splinters sticking out and it's almost like the waters of the lake have sanded them perfectly over the years. No need to overdo it. Just making sure. You make your way to the end of the dock where there's a rope tied to the end post. You grab the rope and begin to pull in the old canoe from the fog that's laid napping there on the body of the lake like a comforter on a bed. A few more pulls and the canoe is visible. And a few more pulls of the wet nylon rope and it's here, ready for you to cross. You untie the rope from the post, holding on to the side of the canoe and square it up against the dock. Reaching inside, you take the paddle, your favorite wooden paddle with a Native American engraving on the bottom, and you lay it across the canoe for support. And from a squat, you carefully step into the center of the canoe with your right foot and sit gently on the back bench. You swing in your left foot, let go of the dock with a slight push, and settle yourself on the seat. I thought I was falling in there for a minute. This is the moment. No turning back. Take a look over your left shoulder at the cabin. See it. Really, truly see it. Breathe in. Two, three, four, and release it. Now paddle. It's hard to see. But you know the way. Straight across towards Madame Snoop. Ignore the fog. You know where to go. Just paddle. You know my grandmother named that rock Madame Snoop because it looks like a prissy woman with her nose turned up? <laughs> Just paddle. Straight across the lake. Whoa. Keep paddling. I feel like something big just swam by. Focus on paddling. I thought there was just turtles in here. Whoa. Okay, something huge. Ignore it. Wow. It's not important. Keep paddling. Seriously, do not put down that paddle and do not touch the water. You'll be safe as long as you... David, pick up... Don't touch the water. David!
Feel your legs. Swim. Come on, David. Almost there. Come on, David. What? Big breath, Dave. But no time it's to rest. Swim. In to the shore. The lake. And it's coming. It's coming for you. But listen to me and you'll be safe. Now swim, Dave. Your destiny is in that meadow. You have to get to the meadow. Swim, Dave. Faster. It's coming from the deep, from the dark murk below. And it will take you, Dave, if you don't swim fast. You have to get to the rocks. You will get to the rocks. Swim, Dave. Faster. Go, Dave. Go. Almost. But it's at your feet. It's slow, but it's big, and it knows what it wants. It'll drag you down until you don't exist. The fog is parting in front of you. Don't ease up. Swim hard. The rocks are in sight. That's it. Grab with your right hand that familiar knot of the rock and hoist yourself up, Dave. Good. You're not done. No rest yet. Get away from the edge. Stand up. Drag yourself if you have to. That's it. Away from the water. Onto the safe boulder. Yeah. Good. Flop down now on the rocks and breathe. What the hell was that? Take a moment. We have far to go. That thing almost killed me. And it won't be the last to try. What the hell is happening? I told you, you'll be safe with me. But you have to start listening. So it's my fault. I told you not to touch the water. I just want to go to sleep. There is no sleep. Only the meadow. You have to get to the meadow. I don't have much of a choice now, do I? You never had a choice. It's the meadow or the bottom of the lake. I can promise you, you'll never make it to the bottom before being torn into particles by what lives underneath. This is messed up. Listen to me. Things are about to get dangerous. About to? You have to listen to exactly what I say. And if I don't? Particles. Okay. It's not far, but you need to find the path. The creek. That's right. Follow the sound of the creek. Should be just over here, where it lets out. Good. Now walk along the creek. Do not step in the water, and do not cross into the woods. Particles. Particles, Dave. Good. Now keep on following. Yeah, all the salamanders we used to catch here. Keep going. Bright orange. Bright orange mushrooms, too. I never saw that anywhere else. Don't step into the water. Just along the rocks here. Look at safety orange. In nature. So bizarre. I think the path is up here. Good. Now make sure you can see it. But don't go just yet. I think I can make it out just fine. When I count to three, we're gonna run for it. What? I thought you said- Don't cross into the woods. Yes, you were listening. Good. But this is where we have to. What's in there? Better to not know. Jesus. Do exactly as I say and you'll be fine. We're getting close. You can do this. This is not happening. This is not happening. Go. Now? Run. Your feet know every step. You've done this before. You run with confidence and ease, ignoring the sound of the thing in the woods that now knows your smell. What? The path is close. You can see it, just as the faceless thing can see you. You're making this worse. Well, you have to know I'm not joking around. Shut up and run. I am running. Sh shut up. It's getting closer to you. It's grippers reaching for your ankles as they glide between the rocks and branches, each foot knowing their place. It gets closer, and you can start to feel the pull of the persuasion of darkness behind you, on your neck and in your soul like a hot tide of guilt. But you run, nevertheless, harder, panic creeping in on your mind, adrenaline pushing you beyond your limitations. The franticness of your movement makes your footwork sloppy. You feel a cold pointy talon graze the back of your neck. The distraction, the terror, is enough to throw you off. Your toes catch the edge of a log and you fall, but it's too late for the thing in the woods because you tumble and roll into a pile on the dirt and rock of the wide, safe path between the rows of trees. You made it. Oh, what the hell was that? The nothings. Nothings? Particles, Dave. 
The nothings live here, and they'll rip you to particles if they get a hold of you. Split you into nothing. But they can't touch you on the path. You're safe with me. As long as you listen. This is getting ridiculous. What you'll find truly ridiculous is wondering the rest of the way whether you would have fallen if I didn't say it first. Wait. But we don't have time for that. This path is safe. But only if we keep moving. You have to jog. Jog? Fast enough to keep moving. Keep on your toes, but not fast enough to draw too much attention. I really wish I had those shoes. You don't need them, remember? The path here has been worn soft. The rocks shifted beneath the surface. Fine. Let's go. Ignore it. Just keep going. That one sounded different. There's more than just nothings in these woods. Oh. We don't need to get into it. The most important thing is to ignore them. No, 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 no. I don't like that. I hate this. I hate my life. Stop. What, me? Stop now. There's a tree in the way. Shouldn't I keep moving? There isn't supposed to be a tree in the way. Climb. Maybe I should just climb over it. No, you're... It's not... Shit. Shit. It's small. It's small. You've seen... You've seen when you trust me things go well, and, and when you don't... Well... Bad things happen. Sure. You could walk around. Walk around. Yeah, that's a good you I could walk, walk around. around. No. Walk around. You need to listen to me. And put all of your trust in me in this moment. Fine. Not just fine. Not just giving in. The meadow is just past this down tree and, and up the incline. But climbing the tree puts you in danger. That tree is a bridge. A connection between the right and the left woods. The nothings are using it to pass from one side of the path to the other. He's lying. So if I'm on the tree... Liar. You're off the path. There is no path. There is what do no I do? Path. Close your eyes. Focus on my voice. Breathe in. Two. Three. Four. And out. Two. Three. Four. Breathe in. And when you breathe out, I want you to release the idea that this is real. This is my baby boy. My baby boy. Come here. Just for a moment, I need you to think about this being a dream. Breathe in and know this is a dream. Okay. The things in the woods can't hurt you. Never. We would know. Never. Never. Breathe in. The tree is a small obstacle. And breathe out. You start to back up. Small steps at first. You breathe in. And when you breathe out, you open your eyes to new possibilities. Your weak. Your eyes snap open. Snap your bones. Snap your bones. You begin to run. Perfect step after perfect step. You focus like never before, knowing deep down this is a dream, knowing that you are just laying in your bed and the only way back is to jump. You have to jump the tree. Six feet. But it doesn't matter. You're free now, free of all connection to life, free to jump as high as you want. The down tree is coming, your adrenaline and fear kicking in. All the sounds swell around you, the sounds of the angry nothings because they know what you're capable of and they don't like it. Three more perfect steps and you jump harder than you've ever jumped, diving headfirst over the trunk of the downed tree and landing in a forward roll on the other side. The meadow is just up ahead. Get up. Run. You said this was a dream. I fucking lied. Now run. Scramble up. Get your feet under you. Good. One foot in front of the other. The meadow is up there, and the nothings will do anything to stop you. Listen carefully. Run. Faster. Duck left. Good. Now keep going. Duck right. Okay. Jump. There it is. Just make it to the clearing. Run. Harder. Faster than you've ever run into the meadow. Feel the breeze on your face and the wet dew of the tall shoulder-height grass as you slow down. Safe. For now. 
for now? How, how long? You're here. The voices have stopped. The trees are far in a circle around the meadow. The nothings can't reach you now. I still feel them. I know. But look around. You're here. You're exactly where you need to be. Oh my god, is that... Yes. Is that my tent? It is. Wait, what? Yeah, I, I was camping here the other night. That's right. And I just... Go to it. I left it here? That doesn't seem... Open it. No. I'm sorry. How? Hypothermia. But I... It was a damp night. You just got too cold. So then I'm... You are. And you're... I am. Well, I can't... I'm afraid not. I, I don't remember... People rarely do. Was it painful? You just... slipped away. So... you're... what? Guiding me to... To where you're supposed to be. Heaven? If that's what you want to call it. What about... Particles. They'll rip you to particles. But if you come with me, we can preserve your soul. Keep you intact. And set you back into place. Okay. What, what do I need to do? Look to your left. Look down the path that leads into the woods. Into the darkness. Not the woods again. Just look. Do you see it? I... Look past the path and into the darkness and see. A pinhole. Yes. A star. Distant but glowing. A powerful beacon in the darkness. I see it. I can take you there. I can guide you to the beacon. But you have to do exactly as I say. Haunting Season was created by me, Joshua Sterling Bragg, produced by Greg Holdsman, Jessica Richmond, and executive produced by Matt Geelan, Patrick James Lynch, and Ryan Geelan, and is a joint production of Believe Limited and Matt Geelan. This episode was hosted by me, Cody Dugan. And me, Joshua Sterling Bragg. I also wrote and told the story with literary help from Mel Forrest. Edited by Colby Crow and select music in this episode, including the final track, was made by North Innsbruck. Links are in the description. If you like our show, please, please subscribe on your favorite platform. Video versions on YouTube, audio versions wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget about our Name the Ghost giveaway on Instagram. It's still going strong. You have a chance to win a book of short stories and some North Innsbruck stuff. So go check it out. Next week is already the end of November. Where did it go? It's Thanksgiving, or in my house, it's eat way too much food from a cuisine that's not American Day. And we've got a Thanksgiving-y type archive show for you lined up. It's going to be fantastic. We had a really good time recording it. I'll see you guys there.